So hello everyone, uh, I'm Alex Kiriakiris. Uh, I'm originally from Greece, as the guy said, and uh, as you may notice from my popular accent. Uh, I live in Amsterdam. Uh, I've been involved with uh, Vue.js for a long time. I picked up the framework when it was uh, version 0. Point something, and I wrote the first book on Vue.js because I wanted a lot of people to learn this amazing framework. Uh, my book is called The Majesty of Vue.js, and uh, it eventually became a bestseller. So after the success of the books, I started Vue School, where we teach developers about Vue.js and the ecosystem through video courses. Uh, I also work as a consultant with a handful of companies where we build some monstrous Vue.js applications, and they have contributed to Vue.js and the ecosystem over the years. Um, you can find me on the social networks under the uh, username of Kutlex, and I recommend that you follow me on Twitter. Uh, at Vue School, our goal is to be the number one learning resource for Vue.js, and we have more than 300 video lessons and 70,000 users. And all these amazing people that you see on the screen, uh, they consist of our teaching team, and they work with us either as teachers, contributors, or reviewers. Uh, besides of uh, video courses, we also do uh, in-house training and publish workshops. So if you are looking for some Vue.js training, let me know. And uh, today, I'm going to talk about what you will love in Vue 3. Before we dive into that, I want to make a quick intro and talk a bit about the current state of the framework and uh, why Vue.js is so great. So Vue.js is a young framework, and it's very famous. It's being used by thousands of uh, companies worldwide, including some big players like uh, Apple, Google, Behance, Adobe, and many, many more. And the reason that all these companies decide to use Vue.js and either migrate their old applications or create new projects with Vue.js is because so, Vue.js is so easy to use and learn. Um, here I have a graph from the state of JavaScript um, where Vue.js developers were asked what is their favorite aspect of Vue.js. And notice here that they have placed the easy learning curve as the first. For reference, I have the same question here for React developers, and notice how they have placed the learning curve as third from the bottom. I have another survey here, it's called the state of uh, Vue.js, and um, notice that the most important reason behind adding Vue to the tech stack is because Vue.js is pretty easy to start with, and the biggest advantage is the ease of integration and the great documentation. Uh, of course, all these companies don't use Vue.js just because it's easy. They use it because it's good, it's a great framework. Uh, it's lightweight, it's performant, and it's uh, very scalable. Um, and uh, I bet you all know Vue.js, and uh, this is how most of the Vue instances and uh, Vue components look like, and this is the famous options uh, API. And uh, I want to clarify that this doesn't go anywhere. We, in Vue 3, we will continue to use the options API that we all know and love. And uh, yeah, this is not deprecated, uh, nothing changing here. So with that said, now we can talk about Vue 3. Vue 3 is going to be smaller and faster. It comes with some exciting new features. And uh, it exposes some lower level APIs while it comes with improved TypeScript support and a more maintainable code base. Um, Vue 3. Uh, it's currently in alpha version. Uh, it's coming out in, uh, in a few months or, or maybe sooner, who knows. And uh, most of the user code will remain the same. So you will not have to rewrite everything from scratch. <clears throat> okay, and now it's time to talk about what you will love about it. The first lovely change in uh, Vue 3 is the fact that there will be no reactivity caveats. And uh, in the current uh, version, due to the limitations of JavaScript, Vue cannot detect property addition or deletion. So when we are setting a new array item, adding a new object property, or deleting an object property, Vue cannot detect the change, and thus it is not reactive. Um, so to work around this issue, in Vue 2, we use the special set and delete methods. And here I have some code comparisons to get you excited. Now, in order to set a new array item in Vue 2, um, we use Vue set. We pass the array as the first argument, the index as the second, and then the new 
item as the third argument. In view three, all we have to do is to set the array item, and if it doesn't exist, uh, it will be created, and you will pick up the change, and it will be reactive. Accordingly, in order to add a new object property, in view two, we use view set. We give the object as the first argument, um, the property name as the second, and the value as the third. While in view three, all we have to do is to set the object property to the new value, and if it doesn't exist, it will be created, and you will pick up the change, and it will be reactive. So you don't have to worry uh, about that at all. And in the same way, um, we use view delete. Uh, we give the object as the first argument, the property name as the second, um, and in view three, we just del delete the property, and it is reactive. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I know it is. Um, the next exciting feature, it's one of my favorite, and it's called portals. And the portals allow us to teleport an element from the DOM from one place to another. Um, in order to teleport an element, we need to have a target portal to send it to. Um, I have an example here to show you. I have an app view where I render the router view. And right after, I have a div with an ID of portal target. And this is nothing special. This is just a div with an identifier so we can target it and so we can send elements from other components in here. <clears throat> now, from any other component, we can, uh, we can use portals and uh, direct uh, elements to, to that target. And uh, here I have an example source. It's a user card. Um, it uh, displays a heading of the user name and the button to remove the user here. And notice that in the template, I'm using the new portal component that accepts a property target. And this prop is, uh, is a CSS selector, and it is uh, the selector to find the element and send all the content to. So whatever content we put inside, uh, inside this portal, it will be displayed within the target. So we have a target. It lives in app view. It is this div. And then we have a source, which is uh, the user card component that sends the element inside the target. So now, no matter where we place the user card in the DOM, this element would always go inside the portal target. Um, I have the example here in the browser to see how this, uh, this works. So this is the user card. You can see it's, uh, it's the username and the button. And uh, here is the router view and any other content that exists on the page. And in the bottom, you can see that this will be rendered inside target. And even though this is defined in user card, it is displayed in the bottom. Now, notice that if I toggle the visibility of user card, that this element also goes away. And this is because even though it is displayed in the bottom, it actually lives and belongs to the user card component. It's just, uh, it's just displayed elsewhere. Um, Come on, I frame. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the portals uh, are very handy when you are working with modals, notifications, and pop-ups, and in general with elements that are, uh, are sensitive or important to where they are placed in the DOM. And uh, they're also very handy when you want to work with layout content. Um, so imagine that you now have the possibility to show something in the sidebar, in the menu, or in the footer from any component from your application. And uh, if, uh, if you're very excited about portals and you can't wait for view three, uh, you can use them in view two um, using the portal view plugin, which is, uh, which is perfect for, for production as well. <clears throat> Another lovely feature in, uh, in uh, view three is uh, that it supports multiple root nodes. And uh, this sounds a bit complicated, or a lot of complicated, I don't know. Uh, but uh, actually, it's very simple. Um, let me know if this sounds familiar to anyone. Um, you create a new component, you put your uh, nice content within the template, you switch back to the browser to see how it looks, only to get this error. The template root requires exactly one element. Oh, so you have to go back, create a new wrapper element, either a div, a span, or, or anything, you put all the template within, then you go back to the browser, and then it works. Well, in view three, this just works. You don't have to do anything about it. So whenever you would create a wrapper component in view two like that, just to put your content within, 
Now you can just put it directly under the template element. <laughs> mm, the next exciting change is uh, regarding the V model API. <coughs> and um, the V model API is changing from this to this. And here you might wonder why are you going to love this? Why is this good or, or, or exciting? And, um, and you're going to love it because now you will be able to apply not just to one, not two, but as many SV models as you like on your components. <laughs> <laughs> OK, and now it's time for a, for a serious, uh, exciting feature um, that it's no other than the infamous Composition API. The Composition API uh, is a new advanced feature that is an addition to the current API, while the Options API is not being deprecated. It is currently in RFC status, so the syntax might change, and uh, you should not use it in production just yet. Um, typically here, I would have a ton of code examples and use cases for the Composition API, but because uh, many other speakers are going to cover uh, the topic in this conference, I will just make a quick intro and share my thoughts, uh, uh, thoughts on it. So the Composition API is great for code organization, logic reuse, and TypeScript support. And uh, the major benefits of the Composition API is, first of all, that it's extremely flexible. Because it is essentially JavaScript functions that you can customize through arguments and you can use everywhere in your applications or in anywhere in, in JavaScript code. There is also a clear source of properties. So when you use the Composition API to reuse component options, you know where these uh, data, methods, or computed properties are coming from, from when you import them from the Composition functions. There is also performance benefits, as there are no um, component instances involved. And there is no namespace collision, as you would have with mixins. The Composition API is a great fit for when the component code grows too long. How many of you have worked with a component that is more than 1,000 lines? Please raise your hands. OK. I feel you, folks. So for these cases, the Composition API is a blessing, because we can break this component in smaller files that uh, we can also reuse if needed. Uh, another great use case for the Composition API is when there is a team that works on the same big components. Um, when you want to reuse component options without using mixins, and when TypeScript support is important for your application. As everything in life, the Composition API comes with its own drawbacks. And um, these drawbacks, in my opinion, are the overhead of introducing refs, the fact that there is no set template, the same uh, issue we have uh, with mixins, and the learning curve. And the learning curve is the most important one for me, because remember in the intro how many developers and companies love and use Vue.js uh, just because it's so easy to learn and use. So please keep this in mind. Don't go crazy. You don't need to rewrite your Vue.js 2 application with a composition API. Um, you don't need to use it in a single component. And keep the junior developers in mind. And uh, what I really like with Vue.js is that you can teach a person that, uh, OK, here is your data, your compute properties, your methods. And then they can go on and build amazing things. But uh, the Composition API is not so friendly for, uh, for junior developers or uh, back-end developers or web designers. So, so have that in mind. And now suspense. Yeah, this is not a joke. Uh, this is a new component in Vue 3 that renders some fallback content instead of a component until a condition is met. It works like that. It accepts a default template, and uh, this is the component that should be displayed when it's ready. But while the component is, uh, is doing some asynchronous operations, uh, Suspense accepts a fallback template that will be displayed um, until the component is ready. So you don't have to worry about uh, implementing this loading indicator, because Suspense will take care of this for you. And this is a placeholder line, because you're going to love the next change. How many of you like and use filters today? Amanda, there's no same? Raise your hands. Cool. Only a few people. 
Uh, in view three, the filters are being removed. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so this is how we use filters in view two. Um, we use uh, we use them in the template uh, using the pipe symbol, and uh, we specify the filter name. And this is to transform transform a value before we displayed it to the user. Um, a common use case is when we use uh, with uh, money and currencies, and in general when uh, we need to change the format of what we show. So this is not possible in view three. Instead, to do the same, to do the same work, we will use a method, and uh, we will pass the value as the as the argument. So there is no more dilemma. You don't need to worry if you should use a method or a filter to transform something before displaying it to the user, because filters will not exist. Uh, what I'm showing you so far is the, the changes that I believe that uh, you will love, that you will be very excited about. But there are quite some more changes. Some you might love, some you might hate. Some you might not even care, but uh, to mention a few, the global mounting API is changing. Uh, the transparent wrappers will be simplified. Um, the slots uh, will be unified, and uh, and quite some more. Now it's time for some hints. Um, View three will not break your applications, so you will not need to rewrite everything. But uh, of course, you will have to spend some time to learn what's changing and migrate your application to take advantage of all the new exciting stuff. But uh, it's like it will not it will not break your application. Um, if you are not already using Vue.js or if you don't know Vue.js, you don't need to wait for Vue 3 in order to learn it or use it, uh, because the Surface API mostly remains the same. It uh, it just becomes better. And if you still wonder why to upgrade to Vue 3. Uh, you should upgrade to take advantage of the massive performance improvements, the exceptional reusability possibilities, uh, all these exciting new features and changes, um, the new design patterns for scalability, and the TypeScript support if this is something you need. Um, Philip Rakowski and I uh, were working on a course that is called What's New in Vue 3, where we cover what I showed you today in uh, more in depth and with more uh, code examples, of course, uh, along with all the other the, the non-exciting stuff. Um, so you can find the course here, and uh, you can follow it uh, if you want to get notified when we launch it. We expect it to be ready in, uh, in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, you can take a photo if you want. Next. So yeah, that's me. Uh, I do videos and workshops. My website is Vueschool.io, and uh, every single one of you should have got a $25 free pass today. Uh, check your goodie bags. Uh, we spent 30 cents to print each one, so please keep that in mind. Um, yeah, this is cool. Uh, yeah, this is the website. We have a lot of courses for uh, beginners, intermediate, and advanced developers. We also cover uh, the ecosystem, like uh, form validation, routing, uh, state management, CLI, and whatnot, um, even other topics like unit testing and ES6. And since it's free for you guys, you should definitely check it out. Uh, if you haven't got a pass, you can take a photo of this QR code. Please don't post it online. OK, five, four, three, two, one. It's gone. So we have a booth uh, in, the, in the next door. Uh, you can come and uh, hang out. You can learn more about uh, our in-house training or online training. You can grab our amazing stickers, or you can recommend us some nice barbecues that you we can try in Texas. Uh, we would love to say hi. Thank you.